Hello everyone and uh, welcome to our Monday uh, workout. Um, so we're going to try and do uh, an upper body workout this uh, week. So while uh, we're just waiting for other people to get in here, um, we're looking at uh, if you have a bench, use it. Uh, if you don't, you can do all these things off the ground as well. Um, it just depends on what you have available. So uh, don't worry too much about uh, the equipment. Um, so like I said, it's going to be upper body focus. We're going to go and flip back and forth between um, our back and our legs. So, or uh, sorry, back and chest. Um, so get ready for that. Uh, you're going to need a, a few sets of dumbbells if you have them. And uh, basically we'll just uh, try and uh, go as hard as we can for the, the time that we have. So um, without further ado, we'll uh, get into a bit of a warm up here. So we're just gonna start with half of the ankle uh, glides. So on the ground here, just get my shoes on. We're just gonna be in a kneeling position and just leaning forward like this. And let's switch sides. Good. And let's get to a standing position, get our heart rate going. So we're going to be agility skaters. So just shuffle it side to side like this. Use your arms as best you can and relax. So, next one's an iron cross. So, you're going to be on your backs on the ground on your mat, T position, come across on one side, then come across on the other. Try to come up towards your hands if you can. And just gently back and forth within your range of motion. Good. Let's get up. And we're going to go into standing jacks. So side to side like this, back and forth. Good. Go at your own tempo. And relax. Back on the ground, we're going to do cat cow. So, cat arching your back up, tucking your chin in, then cow, getting good extension through your spine, chin up. So, back and forth, go at your own pace. I'll show you a side profile here just so you can see it. And let's get back up. We'll do a bit of a punch combination. So jab, jab. So just that front lead arm. You can kind of step into it, bounce all on your toes if you want, and switch sides. Good job. And catch a breather. So if you have a bench, grab it, get it into position, grab a set of dumbbells. We're going to start with a single arm row. So I'm just going to get that in position here, switch our screens. So you can see single arm rows, choose your reps, do whatever you want in terms of your reps here. Um, so go at your own pace. Um, and uh, so uh, single arm row, knee on the bench, arm on the bench, nice flat back, driving up, back down, driving up, back down, all the actions in your arms, try not to twist with your torso, so uh, choose an appropriate weight, and we're going to get both uh, arms in in uh, a single set. 
I'll move this over here so you guys can see a bit better. So let's get going in three, two, one, go. So nice flat back here. I'm going to do 10 reps throughout here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to switch sides. So you'll be able to see here, really driving my elbow up to the sky as I go about. Exhaling on the way up, inhaling on the way down. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And rest. So we'll rest for the minute and then we'll get back into it. So just catch your breath, get yourself into position. Seems like the timer's going a little haywire again, so I'll keep track on my watch. So let's get going in three, two, one, go. So round two or set two, single arm rows. Go at your own pace. sides. Your back posture is really important here, so try not to let it round like that. So keep it nice and flat. Keep your um, abs flexed as you pull in. If you're exhaling, you should be doing that. Good. So again, once you're done your reps, quick rest. If you have a bench, use it. If you're using a chair as your uh, bracing or couch, whatever it is, feel free to use it as well. Make sure you're breathing. And make sure you're grabbing a drink of water. So we'll get into round three now. Set three. So we should have a little bit of fatigue in here. If not, next time you try this workout or this exercise, try and use a heavier weight if you have it available. And relax. So we have about 20 seconds before we get on our next one. So incline chest press. So I got a bench that allows me to get into a bit of an incline. So I'm going to go around there. If you don't have it, you can always go off the floor and just do this. Make sure you choose an appropriate weight for what you need. And uh, we should get going. So chest press. On a little bit of an incline, so pressing, dumbbells come together, come back down, chest height, back up, and again, go at your own speed, go at your own pace, make sure your form is correct, no matter what you're doing. Six, seven, eight, nine. Good job, everyone. I'm going to change the profile here so you can see a head-on view. Give you a bit of a different look when we go into set number two. So we got about 10 seconds here. In three, two, one, let's go. Let's lie back. See, my feet are planted. And when I drive, I'm driving straight up on whatever incline I have. But when I come back down, my hands are ending at chest, chest height, shoulder width apart, so my wrists are stacked over top of my elbows. That's my 10, I think. Grab a quick drink. So inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up, 
straight line at the top, 90 degrees at the bottom here. That's what we're aiming for. And we got our third round. And again, I'll just stay feet head, uh, head on for this one. So feet are flat. Exhaling as I go up. Inhale on the way down. Three. Good job, everyone. We're going to do back flies next, so um, you're going to want to drop to a lighter dumbbell. We don't need our bench for a bit, so I'm just going to move mine out of the way. So remember with back flies, good back posture, a little bend in the knees, opening up, pausing, coming back down. So. Let's get going. So our first round of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next round I'll uh, show you head on just so you can see the difference there. But the back posture is the most important part there. So the good thing about going back and forth between upper or chest and back or push and pull is we get to give those muscles a bit of a break, but we're obviously not getting the break. As you can tell, I'm still breathing pretty hard here. So let's get going into round two. Adjust your weights if you need to. Good bend in the knees, good back posture. And let's go for set two. get heavy quick especially if you don't have a lot of different weights or for me like I said I in a previous workout I really need about 12 pounds for these I only have tens or 15s so I'm trying to push myself because it's earlier on in the workout um, and doing the 15s but I'm definitely gonna feel it on uh, our third round here or third set so let's get going on our third set when you're ready. So exhale on the way up, inhale on the way down. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So our next exercise is going to be a chest fly. I'll show you a side profile first, and then uh, we can flip to a head-on view. Um, so we're going to do these alternating, so what I mean is one at a time. Um, if you caught a previous workout, I said I was going to do it, and then I cheated. And I uh, did both at the same time, so I want to come back to these and, and show you guys again. So. Lying on your uh, bench, you can even do these still from the ground, you just don't get the same range of motion. Um, so let's get going on our round one, so one at a time, so one side, other side. The big thing about doing the alternating is that you have to use a lot more core strength. So because the weights aren't balancing off of each other, you're going to want to rotate through your torso. So you're going to have to work really hard to not let that rotation happen. So uh, if you grab too heavy of weight, make sure you adjust for your next round, next set. That's going to be tough. 
let me on to the next round. And we basically have no time. I was a little slow there, so get yourself a quick breath if you're following along with me. And let's get into round two. So head on, you can kind of see here. I should be about even through my range of motion on either side here. And I'm just gonna pace up my reps a bit just to give us a little bit of rest in between each set. Still don't have much time, about five seconds. So make sure you're getting a full range if you can. Try not to bend your elbows too much when you're going through it. Um, we're already late, so let's get into round three if you haven't started already. Maybe adjust your reps if you're getting really fatigued. I'm gonna try and get through 10, but I am tired as well, so I feel it as, as well as you. Believe it or not, the fitness staff are all human too. And we get fatigued, just like you do. And I think that's 10. All right, next one's a dumbbell pullover. So uh, we haven't done these before. You're just going to use a single weight, fairly heavy one. I'm going to show you from the head-on position. We don't have a lot of time to get into it. So lying on your backs, and again, you can do this on the ground, no problem. Dumbbell comes over your head, arms extended, and then you're going to just drive it up and towards your belly button. Two, three, four. Five, exhaling on the way up, inhaling on the way down. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's one of the few exercises you can do with dumbbells that really target your lats. Um, it still targets your pecs as well. And uh, if you're fatigued in your anterior delts, You'll probably feel, feel it there as well. So uh, we gotta get into round two. So lie back, over your head, pull towards your belly button. Over your head, pull towards your belly button. Three, four, five, six, seven. breather. Got about 10 seconds here before we get into our third round. And when you're ready, round three, set three. Just hold your head, pull forward. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one more, ten. Put that weight away. We're going into anterior raises next. So working on the front of our shoulders. So they're probably going to be pretty fatigued from this workout if they aren't already getting with the next ones. So I'm going to start with palms down. 
So let's get going. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this one again will have a bit more rest in between, so you'll be able to uh, catch your breath a little bit. Shake out your arms if you need to. I don't mind the blood are pumping pretty good to them. A few deep breaths. I'll show you a side profile this time. So one thing I notice a lot of times when people do the anterior raises is this extension through your back. So make sure you keep your core nice and tight. Don't extend. Let's get ready, round two. So see how I stay nice and stable. You see a little bit of rocking at the start. And then I engage my abs to make sure I stay straight up and down. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shake my arms again. So when I'm doing these anterior raises, palms down. It's just going to get my uh, lateral delts or anterior delts a bit more. If I do palms up, which is more of like kind of uh, beneficial for runners because you're kind of running like this, um, you're going to get a bit of your biceps involved as well. So it just depends on what you want to do. I'll show you the one with thumbs up uh, for the last set here. And so I'll do five facing the camera here to start. Let's get going, round three, so thumbs up, just above shoulder height, back down. Two, three, four, five, and side profile for me, seven, eight, nine, We're going to do bicep curls, so supination curls next, and then uh, we'll finish off with triceps. So supination curls, you're starting with your palms facing your thighs, and then as you curl up, you're rotating your thumbs up until your palms are straight up at the top there. That just works both heads of your biceps, so it's called biceps because there's two heads, a long head and a short head. So part of it is this wrist motion, and then the other part is the elbow motion. So let's get started on round one. So palms facing your thighs, rotate, curl up. Then just reverse the motion on the way down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Good. This is another one where I see, especially when uh, people grab too heavy a weight, they'll do kind of this motion. So they're almost doing like a back extension. The other cheap move that a lot of people do is lifting their elbows up. So now you're getting your interior deltoids in. So that's why I try to fatigue them a lot before we got into it. Um, that way you're less likely to cheat, but a lot of people still will want to. So remember, Let's get into round two. Rotate, pull up, keeping my elbows tucked in at the sides. So, can you see that? The elbows stay glued to my sides, and I'm not bending and rocking as I drive up. Eight, nine, ten. Good. So, once you're done your second set, Again, kind of shake out your arms, grab a sip of water if you need it. And then we'll get into our third round here. All right, so third round of our bicep curls. I'll show you head on again. So. 
rotate, curl, rotate, curl, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job, everyone. We're going to go into a French press or overhead tricep extension. Um, just to stay in camera, I'll do it from a knee. So you're going to have your elbows up like that and extending over your head. Um, typically, most people do this with a single dumbbell, which is what I'm going to try and do here. So um, just grab a dumbbell. If you have a bunch of different uh, sizes, it should be roughly double what you're doing for your bicep curls. Um, so yeah, if you had, I was using 20s in both hands, so for my uh, tricep extension or French press, I'm going to be doing uh, 40. So let's get ready. We're already a little bit late for round one. So over our heads, extend, back down, extend, back down. So anyone who's a big coffee lover, it's called French press because it's exactly that plunging action that you do when you're making one. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and just be careful when you're coming around that you don't bonk yourself in the back of the head. I know it sounds silly, but the amount of people I've seen do it, especially when they're fatigued, um, it doesn't feel pleasant, that's for sure. Uh, I have rubber, rubber coated circular dumbbells, so it's not going to probably take a chunk out, but if you have uh, metal ones or even the hex ones, uh, it will hurt. Not that this would feel pleasant either. So I'm just going to switch knees just to get, keep things uh, a bit symmetrical. Let's get into round two. So around our heads, over top, and extend. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. We got one more round, and I'm just going to show you a side profile. Again, this is another one, especially if you're standing. I see a lot of this or this type of action. Right? So you want to really be stable. Um, real easy way to do that is to stagger your feet. If you really need a little bit more stability and to stop you from extending as much. Um, we got round three right now. So get into position. You'll see from the side profile, hopefully I'm pretty straight and not moving with my torso too much. The action should be at my arms only. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, Whew. and that was enough for me. All right, grab your mat. We're going to go into a cool down. Only have a few minutes here, so get into our cool down. We're going to start with a gas rock stretch. So find yourself a wall, lean into it, split stance, push your hips, and just get some breathing in. So now it's time. Bring our heart rate back down to normal. Bring our blood pressure down. Gets elevated from the heavy intense exercise. Switch sides. Relax, quad stretch. So um, grab something if you need to, to keep yourself balanced, grab your foot, nice and tall. So I'm just going to hop towards the camera here, so you can see I'm nice and tall. And then I'm uh, trying to keep myself straight, so knees right underneath my hips, switch sides. And what I can do is just drive my hips forward, so squeezing my glute. And that will just create more of a stretch in the front there. So right down there, I really feel it. 
Good. Let's get into a lizard stretch. So on our mats, split stance or half kneel. Hands on the inside of your front leg. Push your front leg into your triceps. And you should feel a stretch down the back of your hip flexor on the opposite side there. And switch sides. Good. T-spine rotation, so on your back, T position. Bend one knee, come over top, grab with your opposite arm, pull it towards the ground. You'll probably hear your back will snap, crackle, pop, if minded. And then look towards the shoulder with the leg bent across. So um, you're looking towards your opposite shoulder there. And unwind yourself. So this is my left leg going over top, pulling with my right hand looking towards my left shoulder, breathing, and every time I exhale, I'm just going to pull my knee towards the ground just a little bit more. Good. A uh, lat stretch is next, so I'm going to show you this from a standing position. So reach to one side. And switch. And last one, we're going to be in a downward dog. So put, start in a push-up position, hike your hips back, and uh, tuck your chin between your shoulder blades. I keep a little bit of a knee bend, just so you can, I can get a little bit more flatter in my back. Tight hamstrings do me in on this one. And that's it. So thanks for joining our uh, dumbbell workout for uh, this Monday. Um, next Monday, we'll do a uh, lower body intensive uh, workout, so you'll see uh, the difference between upper and lower, I'll give you uh, another tough one. So, hope you enjoy. Check out the rest of our classes this week, and uh, have yourself a great week.